Hey Giants fans, Grump here with a victory episode of The Defining Drive, the all-22 look at the drives that defined and directly influenced the result of the game. The Week 7 game versus the Panthers was obviously no offensive triumph in the traditional sense. Um, given the amount of injuries the Giants had to endure, especially along the offensive line, but even at wide receiver Jason Garrett drew up some really effective ways to keep a subpar roster in the competition against a talented defense... And, uh, and that was evident throughout the game, um, but especially on the Giants' first touchdown drive, which occurred a few drives after halftime. First, whatever, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel, check out the podcast episodes, follow me on Twitter at football underscore grump. Good times. Okay, so so here we are. It's 5-3 to three Giants, and we're in the middle of the third quarter. The first two drives of the half were worthless for the Giants. Um, and by that, I mean that they totaled minus six yards between the two drives total. Um, but now here they are to start at their own 25. It was not a touchback. This is actually where Jabril Peppers returned the punt before he, I guess, ruptured his ACL on that play, um, I think. Anyway, um, so we're going to start out right here in 11 personnel with Kyle Rudolph. And we have Devontae Booker back deep about eight yards off the ball. John Ross moves into motion. Um, yeah, that reveals some zone coverage. But, I mean, I think everything about this play kind of looks like it's going to be a run. But we're actually going to throw here. And what we're going to get is... At the top of the screen, uh, Darius Slayton's going to run an in route. Dante Pettis is going to run a deep corner. Gets kind of held a little bit there. I, I think he's running a deep corner or just a go. Um, and then Kyle Rudolph and um, Devontae Booker are going to stay in to block, actually. So this is really just a two-man route out of, you know, a what looks like a run-ish formation, um, I guess. So, you know, whatever. We're... Uh, we're going to do this some play action here, and we're going to use the misdirection of John Ross to kind of move most of the action away from the play side. So this is this is going to be, you know, this is just kind of like a rollout, and this is kind of busted. <laughs> and uh, Kyle Rudolph has a tough block on this play, but this is mostly Darius Slayton doing what he can to help out his quarterback. And we saw Dante Pettis do that last week. This is good pocket movement by Daniel Jones. That you know, that's something he's really got to work on. But right here, we're going to see exactly um, what we're going on, what's going on here with the blocking. And I'm really only going to pay attention to the play side because I I'm trying my best to keep these videos from being ridiculously long. And this is a pretty long drive. But essentially, the misdirection is to move most of the action away from the play side. And this is a tough block for Cal Rudolph on on Burns. He kind of flubs and forces timing issues and that means Jones has to move further, further towards the sideline. Um, and so really this comes down to um, Darius Slayton just helping out his quarterback. And, you know, this is something that just comes with some practice here. Uh, like I said, we saw Dante Pettis do this last week. Good job by Jones to avoid that rush, keep his eyes downfield, not give up. Good throw, great feet, good catch. Not how you drew it up, but still works. So first and 10 at the 40. Um, and we're going to move into the same thing here. 11 personnel with Kyle Rudolph in line on the right side here. And this is really just a design wide receiver screen to Pettis. This is, I don't really have words for this. I know what they're going for here. Um, and they're, they're kind of stacking the receivers at the top to keep, you know, any sort of, um, you know, press coverage here like you'd see at the bottom of the screen. But overall, this just really hasn't worked for us very well. I would have preferred an, another downfield concept to prevent Carolina from sitting and playing downhill. Um, and something that they were probably ready for in this game. I know that they just had a deep concept to play there, but I don't know that we've really run an effective wide receiver screen yet this year. And it's one of those plays that either works or it totally doesn't, but I just don't feel like we've run it well at all under Jason Garrett, maybe. I don't know. But I'm okay with I'm okay with it. Um not a bad not a bad play design. Just honestly just some terrible terrible execution but then when we move into second and 14 now is that that play lost four yards and we're going to stay into 11 personnel but then, now we have evan ingram in here and he's going to be split out a little bit to the right and we're going to do kind of this dragon over concept again this has been a play that has had some success for us that slant and flat concept on top and bottom with a tight end doing the over route over the ball um spot route over the ball um this doesn't really work because Carolina sits back in zone. It's a good defensive play call to keep things underneath. It's a good good play by Dante Jackson because he's really good down at the bottom of your screen here. This is going to be a pass over to um, Dante Pettis. That's really the play side that Daniel Jones is looking, and he's reading the the linebacker here to see if he 
bites on Evan Ingram or if he falls into the flat. But this is just zone, so this really doesn't work that well. And Dante Jackson does a good job of driving down on this um, to, to, to not only keep this from being an effective play, but really only a, a two-yard gain here. Whereas if he kind of just sat back in his zone instead of playing downhill on this uh, slant flat concept... You can see he's already he's way driving on this. But if he sat back, this is probably maybe a four yard gain, five yard gain. And while that's not an effective play in my opinion on second and fourteen, it still certainly makes for an easier third down than that. Um, and this is this is the play right here. So I, I did this whole drive, but really there's a series of plays here, starting with this one, that are really what I'm I'm talking about. Really what got me excited here. This play is huge. This is a pass to Devontae Booker, and right here this isn't really so much play design as it's Daniel Jones progressing here um so this is gonna be a pass obviously it's third and 12 um you were in 11 personnel ingram is split left and you know john ross is gonna run a dig route dante pettis is gonna run a go um evan ingram is gonna kind of chip there's all sorts of help that were that was done for the tackles in this game and a lot of chips a lot of you know just keeping condensed formations guys being left unblocked. We'll, we'll get into all that stuff as they come up. I'm, I'm trying not to slam too much one at a time here. Slayton's going to run a comeback route, and um, Devontae Booker's going to chip and then kind of leak out here. So let's just watch it from the route perspective here. Also, offsides a little bit there. Brian Burns, come on. Um, and nothing really, nothing's really open. You can see protection is breaking down, and uh, Daniel Jones makes it happen. Finds Booker leaking out to a wide open field there. Good block coming across by John Ross to to open up the opposite side of the field. Let him reverse course. But let's take a look at the blocking here. Um, the left side stunt is helped by Evan Ingram. So they're gonna they're gonna run a little stunt, and uh, Matt Skura is gonna fall. But the defenders push so far in because of Evan Ingram that it really doesn't matter. And uh, Billy Price just go ahead and take him. That's how far in Evan Ingram slams. Uh, I think it's Sasan Reddick. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think he's... And Matt Parrott doesn't even get a hand on him. He's just able to take 91 there. Um, and then... Will Hernandez controls and guides his man inside, but he doesn't really get his hands locked in on him. Now, that's good and bad. It allows him to escape when Daniel Jones leaves the pocket. But it also... You know, these linemen have their back to Daniel Jones, so they don't see what he's doing here. So if he's got his hands locked on him, he's going to probably get a hold when he reverses position. But that doesn't happen. And Nate Solder's going to kind of uh, force... Um, who's that? Brian Burns way outside of the pocket. So what you've got is DJ's going to extend the play here with great pocket movement. And we saw this last week, and this is one of the reasons why I, I wanted to highlight that play when I went throughout everything. This is such an improvement for Daniel Jones. So you've got number four here is kind of with Devontae Booker. And you can see the pathway right there for Daniel Jones to step up, slide out, and now the contain is totally broken here. Number four is put in a bind. He has to respect Daniel Jones' ability to leave the pocket right here because there's nothing behind him. But that means that Devontae Booker is free to go. And Jones does a great job. He doesn't try to run outside. He stays parallel with the line of scrimmage and, you know, leads Devontae Booker open. This whole side of the field's open. You know, and he just does the rest on his own with John Ross, like I said before, doing a good job of blocking people downfield to let him reverse course. This is a, this is a huge play, and it's all due to Daniel Jones' development, um, mostly due to Daniel Jones' development. Now here, this is this is another one back-to-back -back plays that are massive here. The Giants needed to do everything they could to help the tackles on the edge. The edge stuff was going to kill them in this game. You know, Matt Parrott has been you know lukewarm at best. Nate Solder's been replaced by a practice squad player at times. I mean, that's I mean, that's saying something. But there's only so much you can do. Now, remember, we're in that third quarter. The Giants started this game with an effective Daniel Jones zone read. So what do you do off that? Run a fake zone read. Fake this shit out. So look, we're in 11 personnel with um, Ingram in, you know, just kind of off the ball there. What they're going to do is they're going to roll... <laughs> this is such a cool play. I'm sorry. So you can see that there's a fake zone read here. Right here, what Daniel Jones is doing is he's, you know, reading Brian Burns, right? And Brian Burns is an aggressive, downhill, speedy edge rusher. And he's been tested all game. And on the previous drive, which is not part of this, they ran a zone read. He he played his 
he he made his keys correctly. You know, played Daniel Jones, played contain, forced the 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 handoff to Devontae Booker, where the Giants are really not effective at blocking inside. So he forces all that in. Um, this is this is just beautiful. So as soon as he sees that it's handed off to Devontae Booker, he's gonna scream downhill in pursuit, and that leaves Daniel Jones completely open. Now on the top of your screen here, Dante Pettis is gonna put a little move like he's running around and then go into a jet sweep position, and you can see Daniel Jones leaks out, and he's look at all of the field there. A decent throw, I guess, kind of. The timing is a little jumbled, and I'll show you why here. Six, uh, Matt Skur and Billy Price almost murdered this this brilliant play that I'm, I'm sitting here touting how wonderful it is and how smart it is. Um, and Matt Skura right there at left guard position is not very strong in the initial contact out of his stance. He gets manipulated into playing the wrong half of the man there. Um, Billy Price tries to help by shoving 95, but he shoves him right into the play side and Devontae Booker just in time is able to hand it off. Um, and you can see Nate Solder and Will Hernandez, they wash everything inside. Everything inside. Just brilliant. I mean, this is what that does is that that's a guy that you can leave unblocked. That's a numbers advantage. You let his own aggression be the blocker, and that's that's kind of what zone reads are. It's what RPOs are. Um, but now you're 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 doubling off of that, which is pretty cool because you're you're letting his he thinks that he made the right play there, and he kind of didn't. Um, so now we're at first and ten. Look at where you are on two back to back plays where you you've done something creative. You're already in Carolina zone here. This is this is something wonderful, and um, this is this is a screen. We we try to run screens here, and I understand why. We you can see the off coverage with Darius Slayton and, and Dante Jackson. Dante Jackson is just a really good corner, and uh, Darius Slayton. I know he's the speedy guy, but he's not really the jukey guy. What I will say is he does a good job of letting letting the throw lead him so he just kind of you can see he waits to make the movement onto the ball until he's ready to catch it so he can get everything into motion it's not every wide receiver is very good get it get himself in stride here it just doesn't work because he's not the juke guy it really it's a play that that that's well executed that needs a broken tackle and it just doesn't happen because slayton's not really that broken tackle guy like Kadarius tony or sterling shepherd is but again those both the both of those guys are out um and yeah, and, you know, and back-to-back deep concepts, we're putting Carolina on their heels there. So I respect that play call, even though it didn't work. Again, if you have somebody like Kadarius Tony out there, there's a much better chance that he breaks that tackle, and that's a much more effective play. You got to kind of work with what you've got. You can't do everything creative play design. Now, now this play is also cool. We're in here, 11 personnel with Kyle Rudolph in line onto the right. We're going to do a zone read run all the way. But is he even reading anything? So well, I'll just let this play, and you can see this is kind of... He's reading kind of the inside guy here, the nose tackle, completely unblocked. And I'm not sure that he's reading something so much as he's just putting him in a bind. I, like, I don't think there's anything for him to read. With Devontae Booker crossing in front of him, he's always going to be the guy who's going to get hit first. Now let's take a look at what we're doing with the blocking here, because it is really, really cool. You can see Matt Skura loops outside to handle the edge guy, 98. Um, that prevents the inside move with the aid of pretending DJ is going to read 98's discipline. He's not. Um, Matt Parrott is going to come inside to wall off additional attackers up the middle. Billy Price completely abandons number 93 there, that nose tackle or, or, or whatever. That What is that? One technique there. Um, he's just going to completely abandon him and let him get a free rush right up the middle. He's going to wash over to 94. Um, and that's that's going to help widen that opening there. To, to help Will Hernandez with that. And then Kyle Rudolph is going to run inside of 43 there. What is that? Hassan Reddick um, to assist Nate Solder. You know, he's, he's just going to run right up the middle. It forces him to take a wider angle, and it pushes him way behind the play. And then Will Hernandez either push... He, he either pushes number 94 too far, or, or 94 is playing Booker, but, you know, Billy Price can't really get a meaningful block on 57 up there until... You know, it's, it's a little too late because he had to run too far over there to help. But what a great play design there. He's really not reading 93 at all, just kind of putting him in a bind. Really, really excellent. Really cool. Maybe there's a name for that, and I'm just not that educated. You know, it, it's very possible. Maybe he didn't reinvent the wheel there. He's just driving it fast. <laughs> um, okay, so third and one now, and we're going to do another beautiful play. We have three tight ends all to the left, and you've got David Sills isolated to the right. You've got Devontae Booker deep. 
about what is that eight yards or something like that off the ball and um what what do you think this is here this is an 11 yard run for Devonte booker this is this is just I, I i love this kind of shit again speed option this is another numbers advantage play another numbers advantage play because you don't block him you let his aggression be the block he's got he's got his own problems he's got his own stuff to deal with here so Hassan Reddick is going to be left completely unblocked. And you can see Nate Solder ignores him entirely, and he's going to smash 94 inside to spring the outside uh, the outside action and move to wall number four at the second level inside. He whiffs a little on four, but, you know, four is playing kind of passively here. Is that Carter Jr. or something like that? He plays a little passively, so it's a really long run for Nate Solder to get to, <laughs> to, um, to make a move. By then, you know... He understands what Nate Solder is doing running up to him. He's able to evade him. But this is really cool um, because this this helps a lot of things. Again, this is this is another thing where they're forcing guys to play contain. This Hassan Reddick has to play DJ even though this play is designed to get Booker out on the edge when Barkley is on the bench. You know what I mean? This speed option, this allows him to get out there and be effective while, without anyone chasing him yet. You know, Nate Solder does a good, good job there. He kind of... He, when he whiffs, he does a pretty good job of turning around and, um, you know, smashing everything inside. And now here's where we're going to say what really defines this is we're in the red zone now, and this is where things start to get less creative. <laughs> so we're going to start. This is a 11 personnel. Everybody's spread out. We're in shotgun formation here. Booker's off to the right. Um, this is a run all the way here. So, you know, this angle is not really going to show us everything we want. This is going to be a DJ DJ run here. And really, with this one, this is just one bad block, maybe, that that screws this one up. And it's Will Hernandez or Devontae Booker. I can't really figure it out. So let's just kind of look at this. Um... Matt Parrott's going to wall off number 91 there. Matt Skura is going to wall in 90 and should probably be moving up to 57 at that point, I think. I don't entirely know what Billy Price is doing here. He, he sort of allows number 90 to swim into the fake action with Booker, but then just does this weird sandwich move with Matt Skura to keep him in place, number 90. I, I, don't, I don't know if he thought that Matt Skura is going to move to the second level and he was trying to correct himself, getting down getting thrown out of play or maybe he's just supposed to be moving to 57 but it's weird um will hernandez really though is is the screw up here he kind of gets completely manipulated into the action and Devonte booker tries to lay a block after the fake and he just gets completely ignited it just all it does really is it slows down daniel jones like look at this hole he's he's not trying to go where booker's going but he does have to slow down because look booker's already being blown up into daniel jones's lap but otherwise this play was there Really, really good play there by Derek Brown. Second and seven from the nine. I, I guess you can chalk that up to bad execution. I don't really love running Daniel Jones inside the tackles at all, but especially in the red zone. I, I don't know. I just feel like you got a lot more heavy stuff going on there. I'm not, I'm not loving that idea. So, whatever. Second and seven with 12 personnel here. We've got the two tight ends playing heavy heavy left. That's um, Ingram and Kyle Rudolph. Now, Unless this here is a design cutback, I don't know what the hell is going on. But it's fairly effective here. It's going to be a little bit clearer um, when we take a look at the blocking angle here. Okay, from the end zone cam, you can see that... Um, I. Uh, <laughs> Billy Price gets demolished, like, immediately here. But his guys go flying into the play, ba play backfield, and he just play side the play side backfield, and he just sort of drives him out of there. I'm really confused about what Matt Skura and Matt Parrott are doing. They're both seriously trying to block 95 here, but in a really weird way. And it feels like either Matt Parrott is supposed to loop around and be pulling into the hole to take out 57, but he just kind of chills there like he's supposed to be helping out Matt Skura, who never tries to pass him off at all. But this is kind of the crux of the issue because 57 goes untouched into the gap. Um, and that forces Matt uh, Devontae Booker to bounce this into the cutback. Unless, again, this is designed. I, I can't really tell because it's really sloppy. You can check out. See, Matt Parrott just kind of, first of all, 
he sort of blocks Matt Skura. I don't know. Right there, there's a miscommunication. I'm not really sure who's wrong. But you can see Kyle Rudolph takes out 97, and then Evan Ingram just totally slams him inside and moves on. So I think this might be designed, but I still don't know what Matt Parrott is supposed to be doing there because he doesn't really do anything. Um, just weird. I, and again, I really don't know what that was supposed to be. Um, but now here you are at third and three from the five. And this is going to be designed for Dante Pettis the whole way. We're in 11 personnel. Ingram's out left. And really, you're going to get some fake action here. Darius Slayton's going to pretend to run a slant route. You're going to get Colin Johnson pretending to run a go. And really what that's doing is that's moving their defenders away from the sideline and goal line area. Um, so he's pushing them inside and deep. And really, you're trying to get Pettis because you can see his defender there is playing way, way off of him. So this should allow him with that that shallow flat. Look at that. Uh, I guess two-yard flat. I thought it was only one yard. But I would have liked this pass to be a little bit further out. But I guess I can't fault a touchdown. But that's actually a pretty good, pretty, pretty well-defended play here um, to drive down on that. But really, the blocking here that's important is Darius Slayton not actually contacting 23 at all with a slant. Just doing enough to create congestion in fact maybe he could have done a little bit more but any contact there especially in the red zone and you're probably looking at an opi whether it's deserved or not so colin johnson and darius slayton they really did the the blocking end of that and, and you know this was a must win game for the coaching staff this touchdown really is what was the dagger for carolina it really put the impetus for them to try and score some points and they struggled i mean the defense really stepped up and allowed them to play a little bit looser this was a much must-win game for the coaching staff, and they had a lot of hurdles to jump. You know, without a tackle to block consistently well against Reddick, Burns, and the blitzing defense of Phil Snow. Not only that, but Garrett and Jones were without full complement or even half of the complement of weapons. So scheming to attack weaknesses becomes harder and harder. And while Garrett has left a lot on the table for play calling this year and last year, he real, really pulled together some cool ideas to help the Giants manufacture an offense. I know the judge put his players to the test this week by calling out the effort from last week, but I really think he also put a lot of pressure on the coordinators to step up. And man, oh man, they really helped the players make the play on the field. Um, and that's both sides of the ball. It was just that the offense was what I was much, much more afraid of coming into this game. So that's that's really it for this episode of The Defining Drive. It was a little rambly. I apologize. Um, I've got some Burger King ghost pepper nuggets on the way. I'm really excited. They're on the mind. Um... We've got the Monday night game this week, next week, this week, coming up. Uh, so the podcast is actually going to be out Monday morning so we can get the most relevant analysis that we can discuss. You know, we can get the Sunday wrap up with the division, you know, the most up-to-date injuries. We'll know who is eligible, you know, who's, who's designated as out probably, you know, by the time the episode. So this is going to be probably the most complete episode that we'll have. We may also have a short episode on Friday to discuss, you know, the Jabril Peppers news and the other wounded giants. So, you know, we'll see you guys then. Go Giants.